when I got in sales, they said, you don't have to have experience or education. And I love that because I didn't have any experience and I literally had no education. They said, all you have to do is be hungry and want an opportunity. And I go, what does that mean? And they said, number one, hungry. You got to have a chip on your shoulder. You got to have a fire in your belly. You got to want it. And I said, dude, if I want money so bad. I mean, literally wearing the same two pair of pants every day, same two pair of sh shirts, just rotating the same clothes. I know I looked like an idiot, you know, not having money to go anywhere. Like, dude, like, listen to me deep inside. It, it says, man, I'm a loser. This is what my life's going to be like. Okay. Stay out of jail, get a job. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Once you find your way out, okay. Once you find your way out and you can get that opportunity, you're going to change. And, and it changed the first day for me. I walked on the lot I um, went and talked to an older man. This My manager goes, hey, do me a favor. Watch the front. I'm going to have a meeting with the rest of the team. You're not, you're not selling anything yet. Just go stand out there and greet somebody. Well, I was really nice to this old man when he came up, right? And then the guy's like, hey, I want to look at that truck. Well, I go to tell the people in the meeting, but they're all in a meeting. So I went and grabbed some keys, and I go show him the truck. Well, he's like, let's go drive it. So we just go drive it. I wasn't supposed to go drive it yet, but I just went and go drive it with him. When I pulled up, he goes, hey, let's go look at the numbers. I'm like, damn, dude, this guy's like, just tell me what to do. So I walk inside and guess what happens? My manager says, I'm going to have this other salesperson come help you. And the other salesperson came up and goes, Hey, Mr. Customer, um, you know, Andy's mm -hmm. brand new. It's his first day. So I'm going to help you. And that customer goes, listen, man, I, I love this salesman. I love Andy. I love that he doesn't know what he's doing and he's going to be the one to help me. And if anybody else interferes, I'm going to leave. Wow. And I'm like, damn. And you know what my manager goes, Andy, I don't know if you know this or not, but you just built rapport with that guy. And that's why he wants to do business with you. And so that was the first time I realized that that's what we did. We mm -hmm. built rapport with people. We got close. We made a connection. I just talked to the guy. He was like my grandpa. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's what people need to do business. That's how business, great business is done. Yep. Long story short, my manager, this is how uneducated I was. My manager goes, all right, so here's some options. An A and a B. Okay, A, this payment. B, this payment. He goes, go in there. Ask him which options you want to, he wants to do. So I turn it around. I say, hey, Mr. Customer, great news. Option A, option B, sign here. Which one do you want to do? The guy goes, holy cow. He goes, what's the interest rate? And I said, the interstate? And the guy goes, no, the, the interest rate. And I was like, I don't even know what an interest rate is because I've never had money. Nobody's ever talked money in my life. I don't even understand what that is. And the guy looked at me and he goes, don't worry about it. I'll do option B. Wow. And the guy realized that like, I'm not trying to hide anything from him. I truly didn't know. And as embarrassing as it is, I just want to tell you this, that that year... Okay. By the way, let me back up. That guy leaves and he goes to the finance office. My manager pages me to the sales tower and he goes, Andy, do you know how much money you just made? And I said, if I just made $5 to go get something to eat, I'm fired up because I didn't eat all day. Mm -hmm. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Because I don't have any money. And he goes, you just made $1,700. When he told me that, I could feel my veins and my blood and my heart and I could feel everything shifting. Mm. And at that very moment, there's the day you're born, the day you die, and the day your life changes forever. I realized that I was going to be in sales until I died. And you know what I realized? That I was going to be a pro and I was going to be the best at this. And that the only way to wealth is through self-education. I was going to educate myself to be the best in the world. And you know what happened? I made a decision that day to start training and start going all in and going hard. And you know what happened? So how did I shift? Dude, I got a check. I never had money in my life. And by the way, I was like, dude, I'm going to freaking have a car one day. I'm going to have my own house one day. I'm going to have a checking account. I never even had a checking account. Dude, my dad is going to see that I have a hundred dollar bill in my hand. I was like, everything's about to change. Well, I made 120 grand, made 220 grand. Then I made 500 grand. Then I made 700 grand. And then all of a sudden I started breaking all the records in the United States for the most money made as a car salesman when I was younger. And you know how I did it? Because I altered my identity. I realized that all that any one of us needs to do. And so if somebody's watching this right now, all you need to do is just wake the hell up. Mm. And by the way, people do what they do because of what they think about their self. I thought I was a loser, so I was making decisions like a loser. Mm. And, and then at that point, I decided, hey, I'm going to be a winner, and I started making decisions like a winner. I tell people all the time, decision-making is how people get a good life or a bad life. I started making better decisions from that day forward. If you want to get a six-pack, are you going to eat a cheeseburger or grilled chicken? Right. Grilled chicken. Look, if you eat a cheeseburger, that takes you further away from where you want to go. So that's called a bad decision. It was that simple. Decision-making that day was very easy. I was going to plug my brain into everything that was good for me, and then everything that was good for me made me better. Mm -hmm. I was going to stay around people and places that made me better. And anybody and everybody in my life that didn't believe in me, I cut them off immediately. Wow. I immediately cut everybody off. And then you know what happened? I looked up, and a lot of the people that didn't believe in me, you know what? Then they were asking me, hey, how did you do this? Hey, how do you have that? And by mm -hmm. the way, I want to say something to everybody. This is so important. So when I was younger and I was a car salesman, 
people used to say, oh man, you're a car salesman. I remember going to parties, right? And people would be like, hey, what do you do? And my buddy's like, oh, I'm a chiropractor. Next guy's like, oh, I'm a lawyer, right? And, that guy, and the guy's like, I'm a doctor. And I'd be like, oh, I'm a car salesman. And I remember the look that people used to give me. Like, you're a car salesman? I became a multi, multi-millionaire when I was younger selling cars. You know what I'll tell you in any industry? I want you to know this no matter what you do. If you go to a Starbucks right now and somebody was taking a survey, what do you think about car salesmen? Mm-hmm. People would say robbers, cheats, thieves, and liars. Question is, what would they say after they met you? Mm. That is the state that everybody needs to live in. Mm-hmm. What would they say after they met you? Who gives a shit about what anybody says about anybody? Yep. How you holding up? How you doing? How are you handling yourself? That is all that matters. Mm. So I don't eat out of other people's hands. I don't believe the way other people believe. I create my own identity. I'm going to run my own way. I call my own shots in my own life. And anybody watching this right now, don't be a crowd pleaser. Call your own freaking shots. You know what you want? Become crystal clear about it and attack it viciously. And I swear on my life, nobody can hold you back. I love that. No one. So that's how I shifted. I love that, dude. Phenomenal answer. What was the thing that you learned? You said that you were standing there with the guy, the older gentleman, right? And it dawned on you in that moment that it was it, your your sales manager came up to you and he said, you know what you just did there? And you said, and he said, you built rapport, mm-hmm. right? And it in that moment, it dawned on you, I built a relationship with that guy. And then you went on, obviously, to make 200 grand, 500 grand, 700 grand, yeah. et cetera, right? Was that the thing that kind of stuck with you? Like, oh, if I just serve people, like if I just ask questions, like what was that like one thing, if you had to nail it down, like if I just, if I just show up and do this one thing every day, but if I just serve people at the highest level, I just talk to people, like was that it for you? Yeah, so, so, so the biggest thing about it is, is that I just never felt like I was a part of anything great, mm. right? So like over my dead body was the one thing that I ever had in my life that I felt like was my way out and was good to me. Was I not going to be the best at it? So every time somebody came in, dude, I'd give kids big piggyback rides on the lot. I would high five everybody. Dude, listen, I had so many little quirky rules. And by the way, if you're a great closer, you'll always be quirky and funny. Mm. Okay. Because if people are going to spend a lot of money, you got to take all the seriousness out of the deal. Mm. Okay. Like, listen, yeah, the more, more, the more serious people get, the less money they're going to spend with you. And the more they're going to need to think about it, the more paralyzed with fear they become. Okay. So like, it's really, really important that you always make sure you have fun. That's why I have a lot of energy. Okay. That's why I have a lot of, I always, I believe in infectiousness. So if I'm around you, like I'm going to inject you with energy. Like you're going to, you're going to feel good around me. You're going to be in a great state. Look, people have all kinds of problems going on in life. You know, they have issues. Do you think people's personal life at home is like amazing? Mm. No, most of them, it's a shit show. So you know what, when you meet me, you're not going to want to leave me when you meet me because it's always feels so good being around me. And I'm going to do that intentionally. I'm going to make you want to be around me. You know what I know? I know that the numbers were always going to be too high on the car lot. I know nobody was ever going to get enough money for their trade. I knew the prices were always going to be too high. I knew that the payments were always going to be more than they want to pay. So what did they have to do? Love the shit out of me. Okay. So you know what? They would stand up, but then they would always sit right back down because I'd start laughing. I'd say, man, John, you're crazy. Go and have a seat right here. You know what? I got an idea. And boom, I'd flip that paper around. I'd scoot right next to him again, pat John on the shoulder, and I'd start drawing pictures and painting pictures and telling stories again. And I'd start going over the numbers and going over money justification. I'd explain what they're getting. I'd go back into it again, but because they like me, they would stay with me longer. But I think that we're in the era of the worst salesman in the history of time. I think anybody listening to this right now can agree that everybody sucks. Okay. I also can agree that almost in any industry, 90 to 95% of every person in every industry is an amateur. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're in a shortage of pros. I really think that even since COVID, I believe that since everybody had to wear a mask and stand six, six feet apart, I believe that everybody got really disconnected with people. And I think that people right now are starving for relationships and they want to be close to people. But going way back when I started, I know that human nature is people want to feel important. They want to feel significant. They want to feel like they matter and they need to be complimented. And I'm going to tell you, I did all of those things on every transaction, every single time. No matter how I felt, no matter what was going on, I made sure that whoever was in front of me was super important. I never got on my phone. You know, back then I never checked my pager because that was like 1999, right? When I first started. But I never, I never did any of that. I always had eye contact. I would never look away. There could be a car wreck to the right of me. And if I'm working with you, I'm not even going to look at it. Wow. You know why? Because that stuff doesn't matter because you're all that, that matters. Mm-hmm. And, be, and nobody gets that kind of attention in mm-hmm. the world anymore. So if I give you that kind of attention, you know what you'll do? You'll give it back to me. Mm-hmm. Also, I use tools like reciprocity constantly. I would always be constantly being so generous and so nice and so kind to people that they felt like they owed me something, mm. okay? Yep. And these are all things, if you're listening to this, I told you to take notes, that all these things can play out in your life yeah. 
um, especially in business. And your whole team should be able to do these things. And if you're an individual, you need to be able to do these things also. I uh, dude, I, I I love everything that you're saying, and I think it's so true. Why why do why you said you said something that I liked, right? And that is or that I agree with, and that is that we we're living in an era where salespeople are they suck, right? Mm -hmm. And I completely agree with you. And what I see every day, and correct me if, if I'm wrong here, it's just something I acknowledge and, and I see every day is people, like like I, we do real estate, right? Yeah. And, and and people think they sell real estate. And I tell them all the time, I'm like, you don't sell real estate. You you you're, you you've got to go sell yourself. Like you like you got to go build a relationship. People, a, you're gonna gonna you're not gonna convince somebody to sell their house. Like they were already either gonna sell it or they weren't gonna sell it, and they're either just gonna sell it with you or they're gonna do it with somebody else. But you're not just gonna call somebody that's never thought about selling in their life and then convince them to sell it. It's they've lived there for forty years. If they're not planning on selling it, they ain't gonna sell it, right? You've got to go build a relationship. Is what you've got to do. Yep. But why do people overcomplicate that? Is my question. Like why why do we live in an era? where people slouch in their chair and they overcomplicate it and they're just, they, they sound sleazy and they're not trying to, you know, like how did that come about? Okay. So two things. So number one, I think it's a leadership issue. Okay. I think it's a leadership issue. Listen, if, if employees are slouching in their chair, they don't have a great attitude. They're not mm -hmm. making connections. My question is who's in charge. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to say who's in charge. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to go back to leadership issue. Who trained you? Mm -hmm. Okay. My manager when I was younger and I was 18, he made me shake hands for an hour every morning with him. Do you understand what it's like shaking hands for an hour straight? And he goes, Andy, you're going to shake my hand until I feel like shaking your hand. I feel like I've known you my whole life and I feel familiarity with you. So you're going to get good at shaking my hand. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to let you say hello to me or, 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 or get my name until you shake my hand right. Okay. And by the way, when you answer the phone, you know, when you, and you talk to somebody, mm -hmm. is it like, you know, ABC mortgage or is it like, hope you have the best day of your life. This is Andy, ABC mortgage. That. How can I serve you today? Is it like, are you, are you the best at what you do? Do you sound elite or do you sound like some bum? Okay. So like, I'm telling you the reason why people aren't winning is because the leaders, they don't, they let their people slide because they let themselves slide. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people, the only way to wealth is through self-education. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that every single day they should be educating themselves. They should be figuring out two things. I said in the beginning, number one, you should figure out how to know your business better than anybody else, which means every objection that comes up in your industry, every stall. So I listen, when I was younger, I wrote down the top 10 objections that people would give me. Number one. And then I wrote down the reasons why I would probably mess up, why I even got that reject, re, um, objection, because relationships kill objections. Sure. So if I have a great relationship, going back to what you said, there probably won't be an objection. Mm -hmm. So I'd go in how to build great relationships. And then if I couldn't do that and I still got, or if I even did do that and then I had objections, then the question is, what were the objections I was getting? And then lastly, how would I overcome those? And what mm -hmm. were the best ways to overcome them? And then I would memorize those word tracks and I'd have them tattooed on my heart. So literally my back was against the wall and I had to say something like I didn't have to think about what to say. So no matter how much pressure was on the table, no matter what, what situation we were in, I always sounded like the words just flowed out of my mouth mm -hmm. like water and I was nice and smooth and I was confident and then my tonality mm -hmm. was there. Listen, if you're having to think about what to say and you don't know what to say, I assure you, your tonality, your posture, your confidence, and your certainty is off. Mm. Okay. So like you want to talk about going pro, you need to write down the top 10 objections in your industry right now. And you need to, you need to memorize and learn how to overcome those effectively. Also, I agree with wordplay, word play, two words, how you play your words. You need to learn how to say common things in uncommon ways. Don't sound like everyone else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the wholesale industry, they've probably been trained by somebody in the wholesale industry. Okay. So you know what I'm automatically going to do? I'm going to train myself from someone else who's not in the wholesale industry, who can teach my people. They need to understand what we do, but I want them to teach them differently with different words because I want my, my team to be able to skill stack and I want them to learn from different players. Mm -hmm. Okay, because there's so many great people in this world that know how to break records in different industries. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've been able to take over all these different sectors is because I just need to understand what you do. And then literally, boom, we'll blow it out of the water by mm -hmm. using our language from other industries. And now you don't sound like everybody else. So you're different. And now they're doing business with you. When three people call and they've been trained by the same guy and they're saying the same shit, mm -hmm. it's like everybody's reading a script. Yeah. So. Just to tell you, the reason why I think that people aren't getting better, number one, I think it's the leaders, it's the people in mm -hmm. charge. And then number two, I think there's just a shortage of people that are actually clear on what they want in life. Mm. And I'm going to tell you something, okay? You're going to get one life. This is, and if you're in the United States, okay, this is like, because that's where we live mm -hmm. right now. And I know that a lot of people in other countries are dying to get in the United States because of opportunity. You're in the United States. You're trying to tell me 
that you're going to be average? Dude, are you kidding me? Mm. It's 2023. We have access to all these resources. I mean, dude, you can even go to YouTube. And even if you never even paid for a sales training program, you could literally watch hours of content per day, take notes, write stuff down, and you could recreate recreate, mm. and become a different person every single day. Agreed. But you know what? People won't take the time to do that. You know why? And I'm going to tell you, it's because these cell phones. Mm. It's because these cell phones. Most people are social so busy. Media. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, social media isn't bad. It mm-hmm. gives you an opportunity to stay in front of the people you look up to, the people that you want to not envy but emulate, mm-hmm. be like. You know, like hey, I got people that I watch on social media that are are people that you know I, I want to be influenced by that have brought a lot of value to my life. But guess what? I'm also still building and owning my own life, and a lot of people are stuck in other people's lives. Mm. Okay, so like, dude, everybody just needs to cut the leash, totally recreate. And you guys need to look in the mirror and be like, dude, am I happy with where I'm at? And if you're not, then I would change something. But by the way, I, I, it all goes back to the leaders for me. Yep. But if you're an individual, okay, if you're an individual, figure out how to kick your own ass every day. Think about right now. Am I a good communicator? Am I a good speaker? You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. when I talk, do people listen? Okay, when I walk in the room, am I, am I the most interesting person at the dinner table? Mm-hmm. Like, is that me? And if you're not, you need to learn how to influence, persuade. You need to learn how to do these things. And, and by the way, let's say a guy's making 100 grand a year. I'm just giving an example. Okay, what is, there's no greater expense than the cost of a lost sale. Mm-hmm. If that guy's losing 300 grand a year in missed sales and he's making 100 grand, that guy could spend up to $300,000 in training to learn how to get the 400,000. Wow. Okay, so my question is not what does it cost you to train, not what does it cost you to self invest, what is it costing you not to? Mm. And by the way, a lot of people think that that's a close or that's some cute comment. Look, look at your bank account, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you. You need to look in the mirror. You need to level up. You need to go find somebody that's been where you want to go. And then I would study those people until you know everything they know.